Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these spider and web wirework pieces that can be used for anything like earrings, necklaces or anything else you can think of and of course they're perfect for Halloween coming up so if you want to learn how to make them then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now the wire I'm using is a regular round silver coated copper wire and the first gauge here is a 0.8mm and this will be our base wire. Then we're also going to need a finer gauge, so for that I'm using a 0.4mm here, and this will be our weaving wire. Now to make the spiders with, we then also need a few beads, so I've got two 6mm rounds and two 3mm rounds, and we need one of each size per spider. And then of course we'll need our findings as well, so I'm going to turn these into earrings, and therefore I'm going to use some earring posts and butterfly backs, and a couple of jump rings to put it together. Now of course equally if you want to turn it into a necklace, then you'll need the findings to suit that, so that will be a chain, clasp and jump rings. As for the tools, we of course need some flush cutters so we can cut our wire. I've got some tweezer nose and chain nose pliers handy to manipulate the wire with. And then these six step bell making pliers for any loops we need to make. You can of course also use round nose pliers for this. So you can always check the description box below the video for the material list and useful links. Otherwise, let's get it all ready and let's get started. So first we're going to start out with making the web. And for that we're going to need three lengths of our 0.8mm here, or about 15cm each. And just make sure they're nice and straight so we don't have any kinks in them. And as for the weaving wire, I'm going to leave that attached to the reel because it's kind of hard to know exactly how much we're going to need, but also that way we have minimum wastage. So to get started, we need to grab all the lengths of the base wire and then also the weaving wire. Now put all the lengths of base wire together, make sure the ends are even there, and just lay them flat next to each other. You then want to find about the midpoint, put the end of your weaving wire behind there, and just leave a bit of a tail so we have something to hold on to. Now what I'm going to do is at the midpoint of the base wires we want to just wrap the weaving wire around all of them at once and I'm just going to do two wraps make sure the wraps are nice and tight together and we can always go in and just squeeze the wraps tight and also tighten them around the base wires there so we have something a bit like that and then from here what I'm going to do is take one length of wire at a time so I'm just taking the one on this side first and I want to just make sure that the wraps I just did stay in the middle. And we're going to take one end here and bend it against the wraps, just coming out at an angle like that. And then I'm just going to take the other end of the same wire and repeat the same thing. Hold on to the wraps in the middle there and then bend the wire outward against the wraps. Again, so it comes out at an angle and sits a little something like that. You can flip the piece around and repeat the same thing on the other side. So this is the other outer wire. Grab onto just that one, push it against the wraps and have it come out about the same angle as the wire on the other side there. And the same with the last one, just separate it out and then push it against the wraps. So we basically have all our wires separated out, going almost around in a circle, you could say, coming out at different angles from the middle. Now, of course, don't worry about it being perfect because an actual web in real life isn't 100% symmetrical either. But then everything is a bit loose, so just hold on to it the best you can. And then gonna go back and hold it so the wire that I'm using to wrap with is coming down here. And as I'm holding onto everything in the middle, I'm going to just wrap this wire around one of the base wires and that's just the wire in the middle running straight through we didn't bend that one it was just the outer ones that we bent but then what we basically need to do straight away now is start building the web from the middle working our way outward so i've done one wrap here on this length of wire i'm going to then just do another one on the same length and make sure to push them down nice and tight then i'm going to just move over the next wire and it's most important here just in the beginning to hold everything in place because as you can see these lengths that we bent can still move around, they're a bit wobbly, so the angles can easily change. So that's why when you then wrap the next one here, I'm going to go over the next one like I said, bring it around, but then as I'm bringing it around, I'm going to make sure it has the angle that I want it to have, and it stays like that, and then just do another wrap there, and then bring the wire over it, but then also over the next length of base wire, and just kind of put that tail out of the way. And then go over this next base wire once and then bring the weaving wire around again which is twice but then this time also go over the next base wire so as you can see we're moving our way around gradually one at a time we're working our way to the other side with the other one that's still loose as you can tell already this one is more stable now but then we just want to wrap around 
the next one here the same amount of times so once and then twice and on the second one here we go over the next base wire as well just rotate it however you need to and then just make sure you hold this wire in place for the angle that you want it to have and then we can just wrap our weaving wire around to basically fasten it in place like that and then go straight over the next base wire wrap around that once and twice there we go so I've now gone all the way back around and the next wire is the one where I started out so this was kind of just the initial little round that we've done what I want to do now is get into the actual pattern that I want to be using throughout as well so I just did two wraps on each wire as I work my way around here what I want to do now is actually do more wraps each time because that's going to create a little bit more spacing within the web. Obviously it all depends on how you want yours to look. You can make it quite tight or more open. That's all going to be determined by the wraps that you do. So we're then just bringing the weaving wire over the next base wire there. And we're going to do our wraps and this time I'm going to do once, twice, three times and then I'm bringing it around a fourth time but this time I'm then going to bring the weaving wire over the next base wire. So you can see we've now done more wraps than we did the other time that we worked our way around. And that's gonna just create a bit more spacing between the lengths of wire, like I said, as they're crossing between the different base wires. And I'm gonna basically continue with that. So going over that next base wire, gonna wrap once and twice, a third time, and then a fourth time. But the fourth time is when I'm gonna then bring it over the next base wire to basically repeat the same thing and just make sure that all the way along that your wraps are always nice and tight so you can just constantly make sure you push them down to avoid as much gap as possible but then here we just do the same wrap once twice three times and the fourth time we then bring it over the next base wire and then continue like that and you can already kind of see it creates a little bit more space in between and kind of opens up the web more and you basically just want to keep going like this and just keeping an eye on your base wires throughout because obviously they can move a little bit especially if you tend to wrap a bit tight like I do so just make sure they don't move around too much and somewhat stay in position and this is what it then looks like as I've gotten further on we have the web in place now obviously you can keep going and make this however large you want to or you could stop sooner if you want to make it smaller and also another way to personalize this is the amount of wraps that you make every time we wrap around a new base wire you can make more wraps and then you'll get bigger gaps between the wires there or you can make less wraps and it'll make it tighter so again that's completely up to you and the look that you want but otherwise this is how I want mine to look so what I've ended up with is a few wraps here on the very final wire you just need a couple of wraps so we can take our cutters and go in and cut off the excess like that and then we just want to make sure to push down the end of the wire there and I'd like to just put my pliers on the wire and then just roll them gently in the direction that the wraps are going and then of course we also just need to get rid of the first initial tail that we left that is all the way in the middle here so I'm just going to cut off the excess and just have a short little tail left get rid of that and then I can just grab onto that and just make sure to tuck it in between the wires in the middle here so it gets out of the way because we don't want anything catching or scratching while we're wearing this of course so that is the basic web in place now of course we still have the long ends of the base wires just kind of sticking out here so we need to deal with them and what we're going to do is first of all you want to decide obviously how you want to use this so we want to make a loop in one place so we can attach this to something so you can either just do that on one end or if you want to then also hang something from it you can make loops on two ends that's completely up to you but for the remaining lengths for now that I'm not going to be using we want to get rid of them so they're not sticking out like this but of course we also need to make sure they're going to be nice and safe so not catch or scratch on anything so what I'm going to do is take my tweezer nose pliers and then just grab onto the length of wire that I want to get rid of and just right after where our wraps are on that length and then just bend the wire backwards all the way so this is the front here and I'm bending the wire towards the back can just push the wraps close to the front again in case they've just moved around the back a bit and then I'm just going to do the same with all the other lengths that I just want to get rid of so again grab onto the length just after where the wraps are and then just bend it all the way back around 
So just starting to cross over there on the back. So I've bent the lengths back that I want to get rid of for now. And then just to show you how to get rid of them, I'm going to take my flush cutters and then just a one length at a time, where I've bent it back, I'm going to cut off the wire just a bit below that. So not right on the bend, but just basically leave a couple of millimeters. And I personally like to go in and just cut at a bit of an angle like that and then cut it off, get rid of the excess. And then we're just going to do that all the way around. like that so get rid of all those and then i'm going to take my tweezers nose pliers and want to start pushing these in towards the wraps basically to kind of close up that gap that we had so if you look in the next one you can see it's kind of open and the end of the wire is sticking out and it's going to catch and scratch on things so i'm just going to make sure to close that up and basically tuck the end of the wire away in towards the wraps there on the back and again just do that all the way around and then we're just left with the last length of base wire here, which I'm going to use to make a wrap loop with. So we can obviously use that to attach this to something. So I'm just going to take my tweezers nose again, place them just a little bit above where the last wraps are, and then put about a 90 degree bend into it. Take my six step Belmagan pliers or round nose pliers if that's what you're using. And then we just want to make a full circle by wrapping the wire all the way around here. So something like that. And then I'm just going to grab onto that circle so it stays in place while I'm then wrapping this tail around below the circle to basically fasten it in place and just fill in that gap that we left until we run into the other wraps. And then I'm going to flip it to the back, go in and cut off the excess of that one. And then always make sure to just squeeze down the end so nothing is sticking out. And here we basically have our web done. Next, it's time to make the spider that we can then match up to its new home that we just made. And for that we need to cut a length of a point formula here of about 60 centimeters. And then I'm going to have my length of wire ready here and we also need to grab our large bead to begin with. So what I'm going to do is put the bead onto the length of wire and I just want to drop it down to sit about the midpoint. We can always bring the two ends of the wire together to find that. Of course you can measure as well. And then here where the bead is, it's roughly the midpoint. Now what we then need to do is basically wrap this bead in place. So I'm just going to take one length that's coming out on one side of the bead and I want to wrap that around the side of the bead back down to where the other hole is. So where the other length is coming out from and wrap it all the way back around the other side there and then back to where it's coming out from. So we've gone a whole length around the bead and we want to continue to then come down the side of itself again. So we're basically now having two wires here laying next to each other and continue all the way around until we come back up to where it originally is coming out from. So something like that, you can see. And we also have two wires next to each other all the way around. Then up here, what I'm gonna do is take the end of the wire and I wanna go down through the hole that it came out of and come out on the other end there and then just pull it gently all the way through nice and tight like this. So we end up with the bead having this almost kind of frame of wire all the way around. And then we have both ends of the wire coming out in the same direction from the hole there, right next to each other. So what I'm gonna do is kind of work with them right now as they're one. So I'm gonna take my tweezer nose and place them right above where they're coming out from the hole and just basically bend them towards one side. Then I'm gonna take my six step Birmingham pliers. You can use your rounders pliers. And in this case, I'm just using the second smallest step on them. I then want to take both wires at the same time, bring them around the pliers, create a full circle that looks something like that. But I want to go around that twice just to kind of make it a little bit more sturdy. So just move your pliers however you need to. Just bring that around again. And then have the lengths here come out on the other side. But I just want to kind of fasten these loops in place that we just made. So I'm just going to take the lengths and bring them around below the circles that we just made and also above the bead. So basically in between them, just to kind of help everything stay in place. And then just bring these wires down towards the back. Because what I then want to do is start using these loops that we just made to create the other part of the body. Because the last bead that we added is the bottom part. Here we're going to have the top part, which is also where the legs are going to be coming out from. And we're going to use these lengths to create the legs, but we just need to get them in position first. So from the back here, I'm going to bring the two ends of the wire 
up through the loop from back to front and just pull it all the way through until they're coming straight out at the front here and then I just want to separate them so I have one length coming towards the left and the other length coming towards the right and then just also make sure they're coming out all the way towards the bottom as far as they'll go and we then now you start making the legs and we're just going to do this on one side at a time and what I personally like to do is bring in a ruler to make sure the legs get as symmetrical as possible. You can use whatever kind of method, or of course, also just do it by eye. Now on one side here, it doesn't matter what side you start on, what I'm going to do is measure from where the wire is coming from the circle, and then I just find for the size that we're making and the materials that we're using, about one centimeter is a pretty good measurement for the length of the leg here. So place your pliers so it's one centimeter further out, and then bend the wire underneath back on itself and then we need this to come back up through the circle in the middle there just keep hold of it with your pliers bring it all the way through so we basically have two lengths of the wire on top of each other and then what we need to do is fasten this in place by just doing an extra wrap here now it can be a little bit fiddly but then just hold on to everything you can remove your pliers if you feel like it grab hold of the leg and then just bring the wire straight around that circle again. And you don't need to pull super tight because you don't want to accidentally pull the leg tighter or anything and make it shorter. But just bring it around again like that and that kind of fastens that first leg in place. So just doing that extra wrap. Then from there we just need to make the next one straight away. So you can obviously keep measuring like that or you could also then use the first leg to measure the next one. So basically just use that as a guide place your pliers and then bring the wire down behind the pliers to come up through the circle in the middle there the same as I just showed you before and then when you feel like that's in place we just want to do the extra wrap to help secure that leg just a single one is fine tighten that have the wire come back up to the side again and don't worry too much about how the legs look for now they're probably going to look a little messy but we're going to go back and fix that and just make sure to push everything down as well as you do this now what of course we want is four legs on either side so i'm just going to make another two on this side in the exact same way so i've now got the four legs on the one side here we of course just need to repeat the same on the other side so for the first one i just want to measure the same length so about a centimeter from the circle where the wire is coming out from Grab hold of your wire and then bend it underneath back in towards the middle there. Come up through the circle in the middle and gently pull it all the way through so we then have the length of the leg. And then grab hold of that while you then make that extra wrap in between each one just to secure it in place. And then the wire is straight away in the position to make the next leg. And again you just want to make four on this side as well. And then I have the four legs on that side as well. So what we need to do next is just kind of make the legs more sturdy. So what I'm going to do is take my chain nose pliers and I want to grab just on one leg at a time right on the very tip of it. So basically where the bend is, just the very little that you can. Grab onto that and just keep hold of everything in the middle here. And then we want to start twisting this. And I personally like to count the twists so I know I'm doing the same amount on all of them. Just to kind of have a good idea. So I'm just going to twist once, twice, a third time, and fourth. Now it's up to you how many times you want to twist. There is no right or wrong. The more you twist, the kind of tighter it's going to get. Obviously you can over twist it and it will break the wire, but it takes quite a bit for that. So just twist it until you feel like it's pretty nice. You can obviously always go back and twist it more if you want to. So I then go to the next one and then just repeat the same thing. Make your twists. And you can count them if you want them all to have the same amount. You can also purposely make different amounts or twist because if you find that one leg maybe is a bit longer than the other, doing an extra twist or two will help shorten it just that little bit. That might be enough to make them more even. But just go through all the legs and twist them in this way. Now comparing to the other side that's not twisted yet, you can then already see the difference that that makes. And going to the other side, we of course, like I said, just want to do the same thing. Now what I personally like to do is just twist these in the opposite direction just because they're on the other side but otherwise do the same thing 
Now this is then where it's going to be a little bit different between how you want to use your spiders. So what I'm going to do next is add the little bead on the top part of the body there to cover that up. But before we do that, if you're going to make the spider where you have a loop at the top that you can then attach to something, we're going to do it a little bit differently than if you have a spider that you just want to attach to say the web or something. So I'm just going to show you the wrap loop first. What I'm going to do is before we then go and add that bead, I want to take my tweezer nose and up here where those two wires are coming out, again act as if they were one length and then bring them to one side. Then take your six double making pliers or round nose pliers and then bring them all the way around to create a full circle and then we just need to wrap these lengths around right below the circle so we kind of just fasten that in place and that has then basically created our wrapped loop there that we can use to attach to something so I'm just going to put my pliers back just so they stay in place while I then take these lengths here bring them around to the back but then I'm going to bring them through that circle in the middle where we created all the legs from so just bring the two ends up through there from back to front pull them all the way through so they're coming out here where we now then want to attach the small bead to be on the top part of the body so I'm just going to grab the bead and again bring both lengths of wire through the hole in the same direction and then just have it come all the way down and then what we need to do is just before it goes all the way down just kind of bring it up a little bit and then just put a little bend into it because we need this bead to sit sideways across the loop on the top there so just kind of pull it back a little bit so it's not all the way down to the circle and then bring the lengths of wire back through in the same circle there now from front to back and then as we're going to pull this tight we want to make sure the bead is just brought up a little bit away from the circle so that when we pull it down it's going to end up sitting sideways across the loop there so we can actually see the bead instead of the hole and then that's the top part of the body added now what we have left are these lengths here that we just basically want to get rid of so we can just take the ends and wrap them around in between the large bead and the body here a couple of times just to basically secure them in place and then of course we just want to cut off the excess when we feel like it's nice and secure and like always just make sure to push down those ends so they're not sticking out and now the only thing that's left to do with this is just adjust all the legs here so what I personally like to do is bring a little bit more life into them so first of all I'm going to start taking all the legs and pushing them upwards right where they're attached to the body and just doing that on both sides so something like that and then I'm just going to take one leg at a time and just about the midpoint bend it back down so it basically gets almost like the knee you could say and then at the very tip just bend it back out and kind of flatten it out a bit so you get this kind of movement in the leg and I just want to repeat that with all of them just do one leg at a time working your way around until we end up with something that looks a little bit like this so you can see the movement in the legs now makes it a little bit more realistic but you then have the loop at the top there ready to attach to whatever you want now regarding if you want to make a spider without a wrap loop there at the top because you want to attach it directly onto the web then what you want to do is just omit making that wrap loop but otherwise bring the wires through the body there and attach that small bead in the exact same way and once you've done that you'll then have your wires coming out towards the back here and you can then use these wires to attach directly onto the web which I'll then show you how to do as well. So to attach the spider onto the web, first you want to decide obviously exactly where you want it to sit. So it could be anywhere right in the middle or anywhere that you think will look nice. So what I'm then going to do is take the two lengths of wire coming out from the back. And then I just want to get to the ends and use them to go down through the web where you want the spider to sit. And what I like to do is just go on either side on one of the base wires there. So do that and then pull the wires all the way down so the spider ends up sitting on the web like that. Now what we need to do is just attach it so it's going to obviously stay where we want it to. I'm just going to take one length of these wires at a time and I'm literally just going to then wrap them around the base wire here a couple of times to fasten it in place. So just go to the other side of the base wire, come around the back and then come up again on the other side where it's currently coming from. So kind of just feed it through like that and then just pull it all the way through and pull it tight 
and obviously make sure the spider stays in the place you want it to and then I like to just do that with the other one as well but obviously then in the other direction so feed it through from one side back to the side where it's coming from and then just pull it nice and tight and then basically what you can do is just do this a couple of times until you feel like the spider is nice and secure and it's not going to be moving around and once it's then nice and secure and it's not going to move in any way then we just need to go in and cut off the excess of these lengths here so take your cutters and then just cut off the excess but make sure there's then a tiny little length left or about a millimeter or two from where we did the last wrap and also just cut off the other one there because then I'm going to grab my tweezer nose pliers and just basically push down those ends and just do a little roll in the direction that the wrap is going to basically tuck it away and kind of blend it in with all the other wires that are wrapping around here same of course with the other length so push it down and then just tuck it in and then just make sure we can't feel them on the back there and then we have the spider attached to the web itself as for the other option, all I did was finish the web and then made a wrap loop on either end, so right opposite each other. And then the spider that we made with the loop, I literally just attached that to one of the loops there. And of course the other loop we're going to use to attach actual findings with. So that is another option as well, where you basically have the spider almost as if it's crawling into the web. And again, what could be kind of cool to do is actually attach a bit of a chain maybe. So it looks as if the spider is crawling up from a longer web, so it's hanging further down and into the main part of the web. So that's just a little idea, but you can really play around with these and make them look however you want to. And of course, if you're making a pair of earrings, you also don't have to make them look the same. You can make a set like this and that in itself would be pretty cool. And then of course you just got to attach the earring findings to the top loops or whatever other findings you need depending what you're using them for. And then they'll be finished and ready to wear. So that is how you make these spider and web wire work pieces that can easily be used for different kinds of jewelry or even just some decoration. And also you can make loads of different variations of them. Now for many more tutorials within loads of different mediums, you can always check out my channel and you can of course like, share and subscribe. And there's also a super thanks button below the video if you want to help support that way. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.